You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. ODNI's annual threat assessment highlights the usual suspects. The White House meets with United Health Group's CEO. A convicted lockbit operator gets four years in prison. The Klopp Ransomware Group leaks data from major universities. Equiland discloses a data breach. Fortinet announces critical and high severity vulnerabilities. Ghost Race exploits speculative race conditions in popular CPUs. The incognito market pulls the rug and extorts its users. We got some Patch Tuesday notes. On our learning layer, Sam Meisenberg talks with Joe Kerrigan from Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute and co-host of the Hacking Humans podcast. They explore Joe's journey on the road to taking his CISSP test. And I do not authorize Facebook, Meta, or any of its subsidiaries to use this podcast. It's Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is your CyberWire Intel Briefing. Thank you all for joining us here today. It is great to have you with us. The Office of the Director of National Intelligence's 2024 Annual Threat Assessment reveals an escalating cyber threat landscape, with China identified as the top persistent cyber adversary to the U.S., targeting government, private sector, and critical infrastructure. ODNI says Russia continues as a significant global cyber threat, focusing on Ukrainian conflict-related cyber operations. North Korea is expected to ramp up illicit activities, including cyber theft, to support its weapons of mass destruction program. The U.S. faces challenges from strategic competition among major powers, transnational threats, and regional conflicts, with organized cyber criminals refining ransomware attacks against critical services and exploiting weak defenses worldwide, especially in low-income countries. The proliferation and sophistication of ransomware attacks are fueled by inexpensive, anonymizing online infrastructure, making them more accessible to newcomers. Despite occasional operational pauses by cyber criminal groups due to law enforcement actions, their activities often resume or evolve. Without cooperation from countries providing safe havens for cyber criminals, like Russia, mitigation efforts are limited. The report also highlights China's cyber espionage, the threat of aggressive cyber operations against the U.S., and surveillance and censorship practices. It underscores Russia's foreign policy use of cyber disruptions and Iran's increasing cyber aggression, posing a threat to the U.S. and allied security. Iran's potential influence operations targeting the U.S. elections are noted. North Korea's cyber program is characterized as sophisticated and versatile, focusing on espionage, cybercrime, and strategic objectives. In response, CISA has outlined a 2024 plan to address these threats, particularly from China, through enhanced cybersecurity and collaboration efforts. Yesterday, White House officials met with United Health Group's CEO and industry representatives to address the cyber attack on United Health's tech unit Change Healthcare that disrupted U.S. healthcare operations. This gathering marked the first coordinated effort between healthcare providers and insurers post-hack. The cyber attack, attributed to the Black Cat ransomware group, 
significantly impacted the healthcare system, affecting the processing of medical claims and payments. Health insurers have since implemented alternative payment processes to assist healthcare providers. Change Healthcare, which is crucial for processing about half of U.S. medical claims, serves numerous healthcare entities. U.S. officials have urged United Health to expedite payments to affected providers, highlighting the extensive reach and impact of the cyber attack on the healthcare sector. Mikhail Vasiliev, a Russian Canadian involved in the Lockbit ransomware operation, has been sentenced to four years in prison by an Ontario court. Arrested in November 2022 and pleading guilty to eight charges in February 2024, Vasiliev played a crucial role in numerous high profile cyber attacks, demanding ransoms totaling over $100 million. His activities, particularly targeting Canadian businesses, led to significant disruptions between 2021 and 22. Despite his lawyers' claims of pandemic driven criminality, Justice Michel Furst labeled Vasiliev a cyber-terrorist driven by greed. He's been ordered to pay $860,000 in restitution and faces potential extradition to the U.S. for further charges. Meanwhile, despite law enforcement efforts to disrupt Lockbit, including arrests and a $15 million reward for information, the gang attempts to recover using new infrastructure to resume attacks, although their activity level may be overstated, according to recent analysis. The Klopp ransomware group leaked personal and financial information stolen from Stanford Medicine, University of Maryland, Baltimore, and the University of California. The breach occurred through vulnerabilities in the Excellion file transfer appliance, a tool used by these institutions to share and store sensitive information. Stanford Medicine reported that stolen data included social security numbers and financial details. UMB acknowledged a breach involving personally identifiable information, while the University of California recognized a broader cyber attack impacting several entities. Similar incidents also affected the University of Colorado and the University of Miami. Although internal networks remain secure, the compromised Excellian servers led to significant data exposure. The Klopp ransomware group, potentially linked with the FIN11 cybercrime group, aims to pressure victims into paying ransoms to prevent data leaks. This series of attacks underscores ongoing security challenges and the necessity for robust cybersecurity measures against ransomware threats. Financial technology firm Equilend has disclosed a data breach due to a ransomware attack in January attributed to the Lockbit Group. This incident compromised personal information of Equilend employees, including names, birth dates, social security numbers, and payroll details. Although there is no evidence of misuse, affected individuals are offered two years of free credit monitoring and identity protection. The attack led to temporary service disruptions but the full extent and whether a ransom was paid remain undisclosed. Lockbit's leak site currently does not list Equiland, suggesting possible negotiations. Fortinet has announced vulnerabilities in its products, with two classified as critical and others as high severity, prompting an advisory from CISA. The vulnerabilities impact FortiClient EMS, FortiManager, FortiOS, and FortiProxy. Critical vulnerabilities include allowing command execution on admin workstations through malicious log entries and enabling code execution on FortiOS and FortiProxy via the captive portal due to security flaws. Fortinet recommends updating to the latest software versions to address these issues, Additionally, high-severity issues affect multiple Fortinet services, particularly related to SSL VPN features. While no attacks exploiting these vulnerabilities have been reported, Fortinet's advisory highlights the necessity of timely security updates to prevent potential cybersecurity risks. Researchers from IBM and VU Amsterdam have unveiled a new data leakage attack named Ghost Race, affecting major CPU manufacturers and various software. Ghost Race exploits speculative race conditions, potentially allowing attackers to access sensitive data like passwords and encryption keys from memory. 
This technique generally requires physical or privileged machine access, making practical exploitation challenging. The attack leverages speculative execution alongside race conditions, previously exploited in CPU attacks, to bypass synchronization primitives meant to prevent these sorts of conditions. The researchers utilized a novel method called interprocess interrupt storming to disrupt a victim's process's execution, facilitating speculative concurrent use-after-free attacks, leading to significant data leakage in tests on the Linux kernel. Although focusing on x86 and Linux, the vulnerability extends to all major hardware platforms and various software implementing similar synchronization without protective serialization instructions. Intel, AMD, ARM, and IBM have been informed, with AMD advising that measures against Spectre-type attacks could mitigate ghost race risks. The Zen hypervisor and Linux developers have acknowledged the issue, with Linux introducing an IPI rate-limiting feature, albeit with reservations about further action due to performance concerns. Incognito Market, a darknet narcotics platform, has turned extortionist against its users, threatening to expose private messages, transaction details, and crypto transaction IDs unless a ransom is paid. The blackmail message boasts about the unreliability of their auto-encrypt feature and the non-deletion of messages, warning of a potential data dump including over 557,000 orders and 862,000 crypto transaction IDs. The market is demanding ransoms ranging from $100 to $20,000 based on the user's activity level, promising to keep their information from law enforcement. This revelation follows a significant exit scam that saw users lose access to their Bitcoin and Monero funds, highlighting the inherent risks and lack of trust in darknet marketplaces. Incognito Market has even published a list showing who has paid the ransom, possibly to coerce more into paying. Microsoft's March 2024 Patch Tuesday addressed 59 vulnerabilities across its product range, without any being zero-day or publicly disclosed beforehand. Two vulnerabilities are rated as critical, affecting Windows Hyper-V with a denial of service and remote code execution risk, and 57 are deemed important, spanning products like Skype, Microsoft Components for Android, Windows, Office, Azure, .NET Framework, Visual Studio, SQL Server, and Microsoft Dynamics. This update also includes fixes for several Chromium issues. Released ahead of the Pwn to Own competition, the patch volume is notably low for March. Microsoft recommends updating all products to the latest versions to secure against potential exploitation of these vulnerabilities. Coming up next on The Learning Layer, Sam Meisenberg talks with Joe Kerrigan as he embarks on his CISSP test journey. Stay with us. In the complex world of enterprise identity, securing legacy web apps at scale can be daunting. Strata Identity makes it simple. With Strata, you can effortlessly integrate non-standard apps with any identity service, like MFA or SSO, with zero coding and zero hassle. Designed by identity architects for identity architects, Strata works with every vendor, standard, and app architecture. This means your apps can now speak modern protocols and integrate seamlessly with your chosen identity services. From securing on-prem web apps to migrating away from outdated identity providers or consolidating them, Strata helps you keep your complex access policies as you modernize your identity infrastructure and get rid of technical debt. Join leading organizations like 3M, Dallas County, and CIBC in securing your apps with Strata. Visit strata.io slash cyberwire, share your identity security priorities, and receive a complimentary pair of AirPods Pro. Offer valid for organizations with over 5,000 employees. Connect today at strata.io slash cyberwire.
everybody. I want to take a few minutes here and talk about our sponsor, Splunk. You know, you need to keep operations humming around the clock, but potential disruptions are everywhere. Splunk helps you predict problems and find and fix issues fast so you can reduce risk and ditch downtime. The world's largest enterprises rely on Splunk's unified security and observability platform to become more efficient, resilient, and innovative. With Splunk, you can react quickly, evolve faster, and be ready for anything. Stay ahead of disruptions. Learn more at splunk.com slash resilience. Today kicks off a special series of Learning Layer segments. Our host, Sam Meisenberg, talks with Joe Kerrigan from the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute about Joe's journey taking his CISSP test. Here's their conversation. Welcome back to the Learning Layer segment. This is a special one because it's kicking off my conversation with Joe Kerrigan, and we're going to follow Joe as he gets ready for his CISSP exam. Joe, you need no introduction. Uh, okay. Because <laughs> the CyberWire <laughs> listeners know you already. But for those who might not listen to Hacking Humans, why don't you just give us a quick uh, overview of who you are and what you do? So I am Joe Kerrigan, and on uh, Hacking Humans, they say Joe Kerrigan from the Information Security Institute up at Johns Hopkins. Hopkins University. I've been a security professional almost exclusively in security for about 14 years, maybe 13 and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, And it's been 14 years. And why now for the CISSP? Why? That's a good question. Why am I getting the CISSP now? Well, normally when someone's been in the industry for 14 years, they already have a CISSP, Mm -hmm. right? You know, if you've been doing this for more than five years and and you feel comfortable sitting for the test, you should be doing this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it definitely, definitely makes you more marketable. Uh, but when I had been at Hopkins for a while, um, I said, I think I want to go get a certification, a CISSP certification. I, I meet the, the, the length qualifications. And the answer I got back was, we don't value certifications here. Mm. Uh, we value research. Sure. Uh, which, from a research university perspective, is a valid yeah. way of looking at it. Makes sense. So I've actually done research and been published a few times. I, I worked on an authentication system mm. uh, that was published at Financial Cryptography back in 2016. Mm. From that, I had a patent that came out of it for a signal modulation methodology. Mm. Uh, and I was published for a cybersecurity course that we wrote and produced and filmed and edited for uh, community college students. Oh, cool. Uh, And it's free and available to anybody if they want it. Uh It's a long way, long-winded way of saying that I've done interesting stuff, but the problem is in the industry, what does that get you? That, you know, Mm -hmm. that a bunch of theoretical things don't really help you if you're (laughs) going to go in and do something operational, right? So, uh, it's just time, I've just decided it's time for me to go out and get the certification. I'm curious, do you have any other certifications under your belt, or is this your first one? I do. I have um, I have the CC certification, which oh, is the CC. The Certified in Cybersecurity. Yeah. Uh, that is right now available for free. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. You can get the uh, the course materials and a free exam voucher mm-hmm. uh, from the ISC Squared organization. They'll give it to you. Yep. So, okay, that is a very different test it than is. the CSSP. So tell me, why did you take the CC? Because it, I, I wanted to um, I wanted to see what it was like and mm-hmm. see what their training materials were like as mm-hmm. well. Because sure. it was free, it was essentially risk free. Yep. Right. So yep. uh, I could do that. So I I, I have a, a testing experience event. Yep. Uh, yep. That helps me gauge what the what the testing experience for the CISSP is going to be. So and I I do have to kind of rephrase my question, go back and clarify what I meant to our listeners. I said that the CC is different than the CSSP. It's a very different test. What I think I meant, and you understood what I meant, I want to clarify. Right. It's not that the content is different, because actually there's a lot of content overlap, There's a lot of overlap between the two, yeah. Like, and and of course, let's say the obvious thing, they're both by ISC squared. Right. So you have the same question writers Mm -hmm. sitting in the room who write the exams, the same people who write the CC versus the CSSP. 
what I wanted to say was that the difficulty is very different. So CC, as you described, a lot of discrete questions. Do you know this or don't you? Right. 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 Versus CSSP, you still need all that content knowledge, but they're going to ask you to apply that information. Right. So how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Are you ready to take your content understanding to the next level I, for CSSP? Yes, I am ready to begin this. And I'm, I'm anxious and uh, actually quite eager to get this on the road. Awesome. Well, Joe, we are looking forward to follow along with your journey. Um, hopefully I can be helpful. And I know that our conversations will be helpful to those people who are studying for the CSSP. So we're I looking hope forward so. to it. That is our Learning Layer host, Sam Meisenberg, talking with Joe Kerrigan, my co-host on the Hacking Humans podcast. With over 8,000 threat hunters analyzing over 65 trillion signals daily, Microsoft works tirelessly with the federal government to keep our nation's data secure. This 30-plus year partnership is driving mission innovation that is secure by design. Whether optimizing your existing defenses or tackling advanced threats with AI, Microsoft gives you the intelligence and the automation you need to defend at mission scale. Let's work together to stay ahead of emerging threats and secure your mission anywhere. Learn more at aka.ms slash fedcyber. That's aka.ms slash fedcyber. And finally, here we go again. Malwarebytes notes another round of that tired Facebook hoax claiming you can magically forbid Meta from using your photos and posts by copying and pasting some legal mumbo-jumbo. It's like Groundhog Day on social media, with this nonsense popping up more times than I can count since its first appearance in 2012. Despite clear statements from Facebook and numerous debunkings from fact-checkers like Snopes, People keep falling for it and spreading it around. Let's set the record straight once and for all. Posting a declaration on your Facebook timeline does absolutely nothing to change the terms you agreed to when you signed up. Facebook doesn't own your content, but yes, you give them permission to use it according to their terms, which, by the way, you agreed to. If you're that concerned about privacy, maybe it's time to rethink your relationship with social media instead of sharing a pointless post that achieves nothing but fueling more misinformation. It's frustrating to see this hoax circulate time and time again, especially when there are legitimate privacy concerns to be aware of. Instead of doing a bit of research or questioning the efficacy of these viral solutions, folks just hit the share button, perpetuating fear and confusion. If you're tempted to share something like this, just in case, please don't. It only keeps this endless cycle of misinformation going. Let's be more critical of what we share and stop these hoaxes from getting yet another undeserved round of attention. And that's The Cyberwire. For links to all of today's stories, check out our daily briefing at thecyberwire.com. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. You can email us at cyberwire at n2k.com. N2K Strategic Workforce Intelligence optimizes the value of your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your team while making your team smarter. Learn more at n2k.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. Our mixer is Trey Hester with original music by Elliot Peltzman. Our executive producers are Jennifer Iben and Brandon Karp. Our executive editor is Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Fittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here tomorrow.
Managing the requirements for modern security programs is increasingly challenging and time-consuming. Enter Vanta. Vanta gives you one place to centralize and scale your security program, quickly assess risk, streamline security reviews, and automate compliance for ISO 27001, SOC 2, and more. You can leverage Vanta's market-leading trust management platform to unify risk management and secure the trust of your customers. Plus, use Vanta AI to save time when completing security questionnaires. CyberWire daily listeners can get $1,000 off by going to vanta.com slash cyber. That's V-A-N-T-A dot com slash cyber. Cyber.